Now, the process for Basasa CEO Gavin Watson to give evidence to the State Capture Commission was rolling before he died on Monday. The inquiry's chairperson, Raymond Zondo, said this in response to questions he's been receiving about the effect of Watson's death on the commission's work. Now, the businessman died in a car crash on Monday. His former colleague, Angela Agritzi, was implicating him in heavily corrupt activities. Govan Whittle's following the story for us. He joins us now in studio. So, Govan, today we heard about how the investigations into Basasa will be impacted on because of Gavin Watson's death. What is Raymond Zondo saying? Well, he gave feedback on the state... Uh of state of capture inquiries process to actually get Gavin Watson to submit an affidavit because of course he didn't need to appear in person and the Deputy Chief Justice said that he had died before that process was completed but let's have a look at what the Deputy Chief Justice had to say himself. Zuma, the in the case of late Mr. Gavin Watson, the Regulation 106 Directive that I had signed was not one that required him to appear before the Commission as yet, but it was one that uh, uh, required him to finish an affidavit dealing with various matters that had been uh, dealt with in uh, the statement of Mr. Agrizi and um, the personnel of the Commission uh, had already been in touch with his attorneys and attempts were being made to arrange for the directive to be served on Mr. Watson, uh, but I understand that he, his attorneys had indicated that the service should be on, on them. Uh, the directive had not yet been served um, at the time of his passing on. So what about the NPA, which was preparing to actually prosecute this Basasa matter? So the Basasa docket has been with the NPA for a number of years, back when uh, Nomkoba Jibo was the acting director of the NPA. I spoke to them this morning, asking them about the implica implications of Gavin Watson's death, and they say that the investigation has not been derailed, that the evidence that they have is sufficient for them to move forward, and we should be seeing some progress in the near future. That's interesting. And then, of course, the status of the autopsy report. We're looking forward to that for details about how this accident happened happened and then the private investigator matter. Yeah, so I spoke to Papa Shabane again today. He's the spokesperson of the family. He says that the, the results of the autopsy report have not yet uh, been released and uh, it'll take another, uh, at least another day before that's released. And um, I also spoke to uh, Corbus Lotter, the private investigator. He says that at this stage there's nothing specific that he's investigating uh, after he visited the crime scene, nothing specific that came out. Um, but he said they've placed a moratorium on any community regarding this investigation. So for now, they'll keep it quiet until they actually have a report. All right. Thanks so much for that. Appreciate it. Govan Wichel's following that story for us.